When I first heard that Max is getting a Node.js integration, I thought to myself, what endless possibilities. I'm not the greatest supporter of the JavaScript language and the environment it lives in, but hey, the premise of reusing other software I had written in Max was just too tempting. That said, when it finally came out, I was a little stunned not to find a more detailed introduction in how to set up a project with npm, install modules, etc. Maybe I didn't search intensely enough, but at least there wasn't something screaming at me, try this. So well, while everybody else is freaking out about MC, here's my first take on Node in Max, a little script that allows you to play arbitrary YouTube videos in a JIT movie. When I asked on Twitter what could be a nice starter project, the answer I got was, people will go nuts if Node.js lets you open YouTube tutors. So I just did it. First things first, there is a chance that many of you have been writing some JavaScript code in Max, but never had the need to install Node.js. You can obtain it from the website. I'd recommend installing the long-term support LTS version. On this machine, I'm using Node 8.11.2 and NPM 6.3.0. You can check your installed versions like so. Next, we're going to sketch how we'd like our Max patch to work, define how we'd like to interface with Node.js. We'd like to send an open message with a URL, and if it's a valid YouTube URL, obtain the actual download URL of the video, which we can then use to read in a JIT movie object, which supports opening files as well as remote URLs. So how can we go about this? First, let's check npmgs.com if there is some node package that supports downloading YouTube videos. The first hit, ytdl core, is already a bullseye. Let us initialize a node project with npm init here. You can basically call this project whatever you like and leave most of the other fields blank. I'd just advise you to call the main script, which we'll have to create afterwards in a sensible and rememberable manner. Next we say npm install dash dash save ytdl core. This does two things. One, it installs the module into the project's node modules folder. Two, it writes the dependency info into the newly created package.json file, so anybody coming to this project later on can simply issue npm install and get the appropriate modules installed from the package definition file. Now on to the heart of the patch, the node script. We generate a JavaScript file and name it watchyoutube.js. Over in Max, we load that into a node script object, which we set to auto start and watch, causing the Max object to reload the script whenever we make a change. Let's also fire up a node debug object here. We require in the Max API and add an open handler. Let's confirm that this works by writing to a max outlet. So there we get our URL back. Now let's take a step back and think about what is going to happen. The remote API we are calling is in fact returning a JavaScript promise, and this will be the case in almost every web request to make via node. This can be a little bit confusing to everyone who is used to synchronous programming, so let me elaborate. Actually, we are dealing with asynchronous code here, and we can mock what is going on under the hood by initializing a promise object and setting the resolve callback to be triggered after a certain amount of time, 2000 milliseconds in this case. We then call the then method of the promise, which actually is the event handler of the resolve callback, so to speak. That means it is going to be called when the promise resolves, be it in our case because the timeout is over or because the remote server answers our request. To test this, we again just post what we get to a max outlet. 
To back in Max, we clean up our message here and click the open message again. One, two, bang, here it is. We now know our code is working asynchronous, promise driven, so to speak. Now let's remove that and continue with what we actually want to accomplish. We ask the YTDL library for info on the URL we're passing in. This will return a promise. So next we call then and say we want to choose a format. That's because YouTube, as you probably know, offers multiple resolutions, etc. per video. The empty object I'm passing here merely tells YTDL to fetch the default one. Last, we send the format's URL prefixed by download URL to the Max outlet. Because this is relying on an internet connection, 1000 different things could go wrong. So let's prepare for that case with a catch handler too. In this case, we're just posting to the Max console that something went wrong. So let's look at that here. Oh, as it seems, I forgot to require the YTDL library, which will of course not work. This kind of thing happens when you don't use a linter, but that's another story. Back in Max, we click on Open YouTube Foobar, which logs an error to the console as expected. Now we replace that with a valid URL and Voila, we get a download URL from a promise. So there we got a YouTube video running, with audio of course, which is muted here. Take it and transform it, pipe it into Visi or apply it to a GL texture, whatever you like.